Hey Raven users, welcome to the Raven Quick Setup for MTI2 on Mac. Now when you open your Raven, it'll come with a card that contains a passcode and instructions on how to download the software. So we'll go to slaymt.com. We'll go to the downloads, select Raven software, and we'll select MTI for the product. For the DAW we want to authorize, just choose the DAW you're going to be using. Then type in your email and your name. And now we'll type in the passcode. Be sure to type this passcode incorrectly or you'll be taken to an error page. Now when you're reading this passcode, zeros and O's could look very similar. The zero will be a little bit skinnier. And a capital I can look like a lowercase l, but since these are all caps, be sure you're only typing in caps. Then when you hit send, you'll be logged in directly to your Slate account. Once you're logged into your account, you'll see the first video is the Raven setup. This will walk you through cleaning the screen, registering the iLock license, scroll down a little further. Now here's your calibration videos. So if you're on dual MTI2, MTI1, Windows, you'll want to watch the calibration videos from here. Now here's your quick start videos, Mac and Windows. Here's your batch command training videos to learn how to use all the batch commands. Here's how to set up the gestures. Here's where you will buy an additional passcode. Next, be sure to download the correct installer. We're on an MTI2. So we're going to download the MTI2 Mac installer. And let's run the installer. This will install vControl Pro, the Raven application, and the touch driver. While it's installing, let's go license our iLock. We'll go to our email. We'll have received an email with our activation code. Just copy this, open up the iLock License Manager, click the Redeem tab, and paste in the code. Then you'll be prompted on the location to put the iLock License. And for Raven, you have to license it to the iLock dongle as it won't work with the machine ID. So choose your iLock dongle, hit Activate, and the iLock has been moved to the dongle. While we're in the iLock License Manager, we'll also want to check that we're running the latest version. So, click on the iLock License Manager tab and check for updates. Looks like we're up to date, so we're good to go. Close that. We'll finish the installer. Once the installer is finished, you'll now notice you have this pointer icon up in the menu bar, and this is the UPDD driver. Here we can check the status, we can configure the displays, and we could even test the displays. Under status, we'll see it says Raven USB Monitor 1 OK. This means that the USB cable is being seen by the touchscreen and the touch driver. If that says NOK, there could be a problem with the USB port or the cable. Another way to check the USB is in the system information under the USB tab you should see the touch controller. If you don't see that, that means the USB is not being recognized by the computer and may require a restart or a different USB port. Now we'll configure the displays. On the touch screen, I'll push and hold the blue cross and release. And on the not in touch screen, I'll click next. Now that touch is working, we can open up the UPDD test application and we can confirm multi-touch is working. Working great. Now you'll also notice this other circle icon that's UPDD 2EO. Now this is very important as this is where Raven will get its multi-touch response from. So be sure that it's set to start at login. Now that we've configured touch, let's set up vControl Pro. Take vControl Pro, add it into your dock, right click it, and set it to open at login. 
This will be sure that vControl Pro opens up and you don't have to start it every time when you restart your computer. Now, launch vControl Pro, and you'll notice nothing shows on the screen, but we get this little V up in the menu bar. This is how we know vControl Pro is running in the background. And here we can go to About vControl Pro, and we can see that this version is not licensed. This is okay because Raven does not need a license to work with vControl Pro. You'll only need to buy a vControl Pro license if you want to use the iOS vConsole application from Nyrink. Now, let's configure our system preferences. First thing we want to do is set our dock to auto hide, as this will give more screen real estate to the Ravens, faders, and the DAW. Next, we'll go to security and privacy. Under the privacy, we'll click accessibility. We'll unlock it, and now we'll add in all of the applications we're going to use to give them admin control over the computer. So we'll do Automator. Let's add Ableton Live, Pro Tools, Logic, the Raven MTI application, Beacon Control Pro, and in the Utilities folder, we'll add Terminal. Click Lock. Now these apps can control the computer. We'll go back into System Preferences again. And now we'll click the Accessibility tab. From here under the Zoom, we'll select Use Scroll Gestures with Modifier Keys to Zoom. This will allow us to pinch zoom using gestures. Next thing, check your Energy Saver and set this to Never. Because if the display and the computer go to sleep, they can shut down the USB ports and you would lose touch and have to restart. So if you want to put the display to sleep, turn it off from the back, set your screen saver, or shut down the computer. Next, let's configure our gestures. So we'll open up UPDD gestures. We'll go to other settings, select show and menu bar. Now we can click the icon in the menu bar, load profile, and we'll go load the Studio One gesture profile. And you'll notice this deactivates the tap and the drag, so we don't see any touch on the screen. But once we configure Studio One, the touch will come back. We'll open Studio One, and now let's configure the touch input. We'll go to Preferences, General, Touch Input, and we're just using one display for now, so we'll do one display, and we'll keep it on 333, which we'll want to change later. But now you'll notice, Touch is working. And if we hide Studio One, Studio One is now taking care of all of our mouse gestures where if we enable a gesture here, say I have tap on, everything I touch on Studio One will be a double tap because gestures is sending a tap and Studio One is also sending a tap. So be sure these are set to no action. And now we have touch, multi-touch working correctly. And then you'll notice if we close Studio One, we don't have any touch, so we'll go back into our gestures, and we'll just load up the default Raven gesture profile. So when we're not using Studio One, we can still function with the touch screen. Okay, now that we've installed the touch driver, we're ready to set up Studio One. So we'll scroll down and we'll get our Studio One key commands from right here. So now the next step is going to be to set up the Raven. So let's set our gestures back to no input, Studio One. Launch Studio One, open up our template and Studio One is now receiving touch. Now in order to use the Raven, 
we will need to change this Tuio input to 3334 because Raven is going to take the Tuio and send it to Studio One on this new channel. From here, we'll also import the key commands that we set up earlier. We'll be in our downloads here, the Raven key schemes. And these are going to make sure the batch commands work. And although it still says Pro Tools modified, it doesn't say Raven, the key commands are in there. And we could tell if we search for add insert, this is a custom key command we've mapped. So let's open the Raven. We'll select Studio One. If this is going to be the only DAW we use, we'll uncheck select DAW at startup, set the defaults for Studio One. And now we have touch on Raven and we have touch on Studio One. Now you'll notice our play and stop buttons aren't working because we need to set up V Control Pro. So we'll go to external devices. We'll add a Mackie control. Set it to V control. We'll add another device, a Mackie extended. We'll set that to V control XT2. We'll add another device, set that to extended. Make that V control three. Next, we'll need to adjust the placement of the controllers. So we'll set controller, extender, extender two. Now we'll make a couple tracks. And now we'll have multi-touch in the Studio One mixer. We can also open up the Raven floating mixer. We'll have touch in here. And in the Raven external mixer, we will have touch control there. So there you go, Studio One setup for the Raven.